That is a Spanish level of commitment to an app. I approve. Hello fellow friends of the blue and welcome to my channel and welcome to Heavy Contrast. Heavy Contrast is a series where I try to paint one meter to the highest standard possible using just contrast paints and highlights. And for this video I will be showing you how to paint Lionel Johnson's armor. I know you probably want a guide on how to tackle the rest of the Primark and I suggest you take a look at my past videos for recipes that will cover all of the details of this amazing miniature. By the way, thanks to Games Workshop for sending me this mini for free. And with that out of the way, let's get cracking. As you can see, we are starting from a base coat of Mechanicus Thunder Grey, and although you can just spray Mechanicus Thunder Grey with a spray or with your airbrush, I highly recommend you prime the lion in white and then paint the armor by hand using Mechanicus Thunder Grey. The reason is we have a lot of light tans and bone colors, and it's not really a big deal to base coat by hand using Mechanicus. And our first step will be to cover everything that is armor with Black Templar. That includes any joints in the armor and stuff like that. If you've been following my channel for a while, you will notice that this will be the very standard black armor recipe for a while, but the trick will be in the tinting step as we did with, for example, Drassar. But we were going to use, obviously, a different color for that. It's very important that you work section by section, making sure you don't have any ugly pulls or any bad stuff happening before moving to the next section. If you want to see a detailed guide on how to apply contrast paint as best as possible, I will leave a link to my video in the top right corner so you can check it out. With our layer of black tempera now fully dry, it's now time to start highlighting. And my first highlight color is going to be Thunderhawk Blue. What I will do with Thunderhawk Blue is first of all a thick edge highlight all across the model. The key with the thick edge highlight is that you make an edge highlight that you know that you can make a thinner one inside of it afterwards. A very good trick is to make the thinnest edge highlight you can and then you make it double. If you weren't paying attention before, remember this won't be the final color. We're just plotting in our value sketch essentially. So this is basically a pre-shading which we are going to turn into the final color afterwards. On top of this, we will also do some glazing because the lion is painted in a beautiful volumetric way and we are going to try to do that as well. For this, we're just going to thin down our Thunderhawk Blue into a glaze consistency. And we are going to glaze this towards the parts of the model that will be highlighted. If you have any doubts of where to put this, looking at the box art is the perfect reference, of course. And that's actually what I'm doing. If you have any issues with this showing off a bit too much, like you can see some of these um, edges, we can take some of this Black Templar and do it in the opposite direction. We're just going to take Black Templar, thinning it down to the same sort of consistency, and then glazing this in the opposite direction. Our next highlight for the armor is going to be Fenrisian Grey. And what we will do with Fenrisian Grey is basically a thin edge highlight. What this means is this has to be the absolute thinnest edge highlight you can make. And on top of this edge highlight, you can also do a volumetric one with this, turning it again into a super thin glaze consistency and glazing it in the middle of our previous volumetric highlights. Our armor appreciate is completely finished, and to be honest, if you want to paint his armor in the Horus Heresy style, I would just do one last highlight with Uthul and Grey and call it a day. But I want to recreate the box art, so I need to filter all of this lovely job into the correct hue. And for this, I'm going to use a mix of one part Dark Angel Screen 
and four parts contrasmedium. And what we will do with this is be very careful and apply this as a filter. I don't want this to necessarily be filling up any recesses or anything. I just want a simple straight filter over all of the surface. And you can see that just one layer of this gives us a lovely greenish hue to the armor while respecting all of our hard work. And now I will just follow the heavy metal recipe for the last two steps as it was published in the Warhammer community article. So for our next highlight, I'm going to use a mix of two parts Sons of Horus Green, one part Rackard Flesh and one part Greek Khaki. And for this highlight, I'm just going to do the same thin edge highlight, but I will concentrate it towards the corners and most prominent details. As you can see, this color basically blends itself perfectly with what we have already there. That means I did my job well. And now to finish off the armor, I'm going to do a final highlight using two parts on Sophorus Green, two parts Rakat Flesh, two parts Krieg Khaki, and one part White. And here is just continuing that same trend of reducing our highlights towards the most prominent corners and features. With the greenish armor now finished, it's time to paint the rest of the armor details. And I'm going to start with the rubber or like flexible joints. And for this, the first highlight will be Mechanical Standard Gray. I'm going to thin down my Mechanical Standard Gray so it's not so opaque. And I'm just going to pick up all of the ridges. For my second highlight, I'm going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Mechanical Standard Gray and Administratum Gray. And I'm going to pick up the same ridges, but concentrating this highlight towards the upper sections of each of the rubber joints. And finally, I'm just going to do a final highlight using the Administratum Gray. With the black details finished, I took the liberty of base coating the rest of the details, which are the white symbols, the red symbol and the gold, using Corax White, Mechanical Standard Grey, and a one-to-one -one mix of Retributor Armor and Stonehold Silver. And I'm going to start by coating the red, and for this I'm going to use Flesh Series Red. Now for the white details, I'm going to use Grief Charger Grey. I chose Grief Charger Grey because it has a slight greenish hue and I think it fits perfectly with the box art. And finally, for the gold details, I'm going to use a mix of one part Gurgrant Fur and two parts Contrast Medium. To highlight the white details, I'm going to start with Ulthu and Grey. For this, I will basically do a very big highlight. Essentially, I will almost leave the shading in the recesses, maybe a little bit towards where the feathers join, stuff like that, but I want this to cover a lot, just to give the impression of a clean white surface. And to finish off the white details, I'm going to highlight them with white. With the white finish, it's time to move into the gold, and for this we're going back to the one-to-one -one mix of Retributor Armor and Stonehold Silver for my first highlight. And pure Stonehold Silver for the final highlight. Just small glints of light here and there.
And now to paint the red details, I'm going to start by highlighting them with Wasaka Red. Now for the second highlight on the red details, I'm going to use a squeak orange. What I want to do with this is the thinnest edge highlight I can. By the way, I will be painting the belt in the same way later. For the next highlight on the red details, I'm going to use a mix of two parts Screaming Skull and one part Squeak Orange. I will keep on building these edge highlights more and more. And for the final highlight, I'm going to do pure Screaming Skull. And I'm just going to do the small dots of this. And here we have the lion in all of his unfinished glory. This mini was a lot of work and I actually took the chance to test out some secret paints coming out soon on him. So stay tuned for that exciting piece of news. In the next video, I will be showing you how to paint his sword. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget that if you like my videos and want to help me make them, you can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below in the pinned comment of this video. Share and like this video, but most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. Patrons and members allow me to do all the cool videos that I want to make, and most importantly, they allow me to release them all for free here on YouTube. Perks include access to an amazing Discord community full of lovely people, early access to some of the videos, and now also private one-on-one -on -one tutorings. You have two tier options for those, 45 minutes and three hours a month, they are feeling fast, so if you want to have a private tutorial with me, don't hesitate and join now. Help me and my family enjoy the list of the coolest persons in the planet, including Keros Kuris, Flo, Janet, Mark Bellencoop, Will Ewig, Derry Denham, Robert Smith, The Rhinosaur, Heather Amster, Paul Goodwig, Casey Davidson, Thomas, Stefan Franiati, Howard Holwell, Thomas Ustergaard, Painting Peter, Javi Mota, Christoph Moret, Bartolomeu Cahuza, Victor Domen, Nicolas Fournel, Nietzsche Gallagher, Felix Franke, Brendan Smith, Alfredo Phillips, Tim Uchida, Stephanie O, Nick DeMau, David Sutherland, Riel Nielsen, Oscar and Jonathan Thomberg, Dan Mako, Chris Talios, Jamie Milligan, Kevin Mian, Darcy Farrar, Chris Fivey, Samuel, Matthews Maximus, Aaron Del, Gareth Smith, Mark Jarvis, Joe Simpson, Charles Armintas, G-Force, Dr. V, Leonard Dinneman, Kiruna Murthail, and Kevin Sullers. And as for me, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.